Yeah. Kindergarten. Kindergarten. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, a garden for kinders. Yeah. yeah that's a cute name. Okay. Oh. Oh my god. Did you oh no. Them? It's okay. I'm know. just gonna pack right dish. <laughs> Welcome back to Life Lessons in Film. Hello. Today, on the program, <laughs> we are talking about analyzing the kindergarten teacher. teacher. It was a good film. It was a good film. There's a lot to reflect on. Wait, I have to do the 20 second thing. Oh, yes, 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 yes. <laughs> to describe it. Yes, 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 yes. 20 seconds to give a synopsis so that we're all on the same page. Mm -hmm. Go! The movie is about a kindergarten teacher who, ha who, um, an aspiring poet, she's always wanted to be a poet, but she did not succeed. So she is living with unfulfilled dreams. Then she discovered discovers that one of her pupils is a child protege poet and then starts to live vicariously through that kid um and that is basically the whole movie um <laughs> yeah, yeah basically doing lots of things yeah. um that go back to her um yeah yeah living vicariously through the kid yeah yeah there were there a couple couple main strains there in that movie, the character, the main, the main Maggie char character, is very good. Yeah. It's very. There's a lot of, there's a lot of unfulfilled parents out there. Yeah. A lot of unfulfilled people out there. Yeah. And it can manifest in a lot of different ways, and it's never good. Again, life is unfulfilling for everyone to a certain degree. You just have to accept it. Yeah. You know, and I don't know. I I think maybe also it's easy. There there are people I think that don't listen to their 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 butt guy on their gut biome <laughs> when it's <laughs> when it's telling them that you're feeling unfulfilled maybe you should change something up you know so that in 20 years you've got kids that are grown you don't then resent everybody or have so many regrets or all the the you know like yeah you switch your life up for a midlife crisis thing like you know listen then and then see what you can do you know to be fair she yeah. is um going to poetry classes right yeah that's true so, that's true so she it, it, it kind of we kind of discover later that she probably didn't finish um her her university degree and and so we think because she's going she's attending these poetry classes um night classes she's probably wanted she probably won't had aspirations of becoming a poet so she she does keep going like she has her uh, career as a kindergarten teacher and then at night once a week goes mm -hmm. to these classes yeah and so she is that's true she, she, she thinks she's following her gut yeah yeah you're right yeah she's probably hoping oh maybe i, I will get some recognition out of this I'll, I'll do it enough and maybe i'll write my own poetry and then i'll get recognized a little bit yeah that's true that's so yeah, yeah to her credit she is trying to yeah follow her dreams and to you know what you're saying about yeah. like people following their gut biome <laughs> or their, but, but, their butt biome however as we say that yeah. right there is that whole thing where sometimes, you know, you t you've talked about acceptance. Yeah. And sometimes I think following your gut means more uh, aligning or accepting your real, mm -hmm. who you really are, mm -hmm. instead of pursuing relentlessly your ideal self. Because mm -hmm. I think that's the thing with a lot of people. A lot of us have this idea of what we want and obviously that's molded by society mm. um, and so you have this vision of yourself that you keep pushing for and sometimes you just keep pushing for it even though there's so many things so many signs that yeah. say stop pushing it does not work for you mm -hmm. like I don't have the most magnific magnificent voice but I would have loved when I was a kid I used to the idea of being a singer mm -hmm. on stage I would pretend whenever I, there was this uh, a, a singer that I loved you know that I was watching um, and I'm like, oh my gosh, that would be so cool if mm. I were that. But, you know, then imagine then, despite the fact that I cannot sing to save my life, yeah. I'm not the worst, but, yeah. you know, imagine then I'm pushing for this thing when I'm very cl clearly aware of the fact that I do not have that capacity. Yeah. Yeah. That, that, do you know what I mean? Yeah. That reminder or it may be depicting us pursuing our ideal self, despite all evidence that yeah. you should stop and yeah. then look at yourself as you yeah. are and yeah. maybe start looking at the things about you that or even appreciating you yeah. know what i mean like yeah. appreciating yourself as you are i think yeah. that's something for me in that movie the whole time yeah. there's this lack of appreciation of mm -hmm. who she is mm -hmm. at that present moment yeah. and she has a very beautiful life she has mm -hmm. a husband that loves her yeah. she has 
she's a kindergarten teacher. Kids are just yeah. fantastic. And she's also very she's good, good at, at it. it. Which is, yeah. it's, it's hard enough to find a job that you're good at, that you get enjoyment out of. And, uh, and as uh, the one person I think in her class said, it's, that's a, an honorable profession to be a kindergarten teacher. That's the future. That's our kids. Like, yeah. You got to leave a good impression on kids when they're young. When they, you know, but it didn't seem to really, she's like, eh. and, I, and I get it, right? When you do it as a job, it's never as magical as someone that just hears, that sounds important. That sounds great. Good for you, you know, because uh, you do it every day and you're, you're like, yeah, but it's my life, you know. But I think there is that where people still want more. And I think, first of all, accept again that, you know, there's going to be, you're probably going to find yourself a little disappointed with your life. But also that's a frame of mind like that. You can also just look at it as, look like, especially where I came from, depending on all the hurdles I got over, look what I've accomplished. And, and yeah, look, you know, this isn't so bad. You know, why do I even feel the need to, you know, have, have things differently, mm-hmm. you know? And when you have things differently, you have uh, other negatives that come along with that too. So it's, yeah, you know, it's important to keep that perspective. I, uh, the, the, the part that, that I like thinking about with that movie the most, and it's because I, I just like thinking about, it, it, it tackles a little bit about art and the, the creativity. What is creativity? What is good art versus bad art? Because she's in the poetry class, and, and, and the, the teacher doesn't want them to compare. He's like, don't try and please me with your stuff. Just allow yourself to feel free and comfortable and write something, which I think is the right approach uh, for good creativity, um, or good creativity, for just creativity. Um, but, you know, the, people are competitive, and so you read it out, and there's still people being like, oh, I like that, you know? And they probably feel like, oh, my thing's crap. But it's, especially with poetry, it's, it's, it's like painting. I think it's a bit more of an abstract Art, music to a degree, you can still feel like people, most people, even if you're tone deaf yourself, you can generally tell when people are singing out of key. Mm-hmm. So there's still a bit of that kind of technical, like that is at least, you're at least hitting the notes properly. Whereas with poetry yeah. and painting, there's even kind of, in my, in my point, in my, in my, in my view, less rules, uh, concrete rules with that, apart from like being able to spell and be able to actually like read that, you know. Um, so it's hard to really know. It's all about, do you connect with it? Yeah. And everyone's going to connect with different stuff differently. So it's really hard to tell. And they have like, not a, yeah, they have a poetry competition, I think at one point in the movie, which again, it's, I think it's more just, it's, you can only ever take it so seriously because it's so subjective. A lot of competitions are, but especially, but that's not a bad thing either. I like the poetry is subjective. But anyway, it's all, it's, it's to think about, you know, what is good technique in things like poetry or, or art, art in general? And how do you develop that? She got critiqued at one point because her metaphors were kind of the stuff that people go to a lot when you're first starting out. Yeah. So, you know, it's, it's kind of like, like your you, mainstream, the your, mainstream, your mainstream oh, and, and, and kind of just, yeah, like the stuff like, okay, you clearly took that from like a, a well-known poet, right? You're kind yeah. of, which, but the, the thing, the reason why the, the, the teacher recognizes that is I think he gets the process of poetry. It's like if you're starting off playing guitar, you first, okay, what are some of the most iconic fun licks to play? So you learn like some of the classic Jimmy Page, Jimi Hendrix licks, right? And then from there, you try and change it up and you play it enough that you start to develop your own. But everything, you know, Bob Dylan started off just ripping off, I think, Woody Guthrie. Yeah. You know, you have to at first... Um, creativity is only ever so original. It's mostly just taking stuff that's already been and you mix it in different ways. So everyone has to first just start ripping off people and then yeah. you you hopefully Finding also have to immerse voice. yourself enough to have different influences and then yeah. yeah. And then your own voice is kind of a different amalgam of these things. Yeah. But I always find that very interesting when it comes to what is creativity and, and how do you keep a creative mind and and trust yourself enough to feel like I think this is original and I and, and I also don't think that you know how, how do you avoid you know plagiarism and things and um yeah it's, it's it's fascinating for me I don't know I was just thinking about uh her that her the relationship she has with the with the poetry teacher that the poetry teacher points out later as when he discovers that she so she um starts writing the the, po- the child prodigies, uh, poet poems, mm-hmm. and then um, presents them as her own in class initially, but then later um, reveals that they were her, the kids all, all along. And when the poetry teacher thought that they were her poems, that he then taught, has this conversation with, with her about how, wow, you know, 
you've really come a long way. I'm very impressed by it because initially when you started, I thought you were really not a good poet. And then you all of a sudden you come with these thing, these poems and it's, and it's fascinating. And then she sees him see her as her ideal self, right? Mm -hmm. and, and, and that makes her sad in the beginning because at that time when they went, when she's having that conversation with him, she'd gone there to, to recite a poem that she, that was original that she'd written. And he's like, ah, it's okay. But you know, it's not one of your best, but like, you've been really good. I'm sure you, you wrote it, you know, yeah. maybe you were tired because she does say I was tired. And she's like, and he's like, yeah, but you've been so great. Like the past, the, the it refers again to the kids poems and then she feels really low. She, it knocks her down. But then as after not, after that happens, he goes and he and he goes back to talking about the how f incredible the poems that she's been reciting uh have been the kids poems right she just looks she sees him looking at him that way and she revels in that mm -hmm. you know and i think it's really interesting you know how sometimes even though even though it's a lie in that moment being seen for this thing that you aspire to be i think it it gave her this it filled that emptiness yeah. that she had in that moment and so that's when she just ends up having the affair which is obviously right. very problematic yeah. you know just to enjoy mm -hmm. the moment of being adored for yeah. this ideal self that she yeah. keeps pushing for so relentlessly yeah. you know i can see that she's really putting in the work i think a lot of us you know we would have uh, it's it's hard for all for people to keep putting in the work every single day, you know, even with just this YouTube thing. Mm. Sometimes, you know, like after work, I'm so exhausted, but yeah. I'm like, okay, we committed to this and we love it. Yeah. And and so we're gonna do it um, despite how exhausted I am. Yeah. And so, and then you keep at it and you get better, you know, and, but then when you're, when you're doing that, when you are truly putting in the work, because she is, mm -hmm. and it's not getting you anywhere, it is so, um, what's the word? Deflating? Yeah, it is. It is so deflating. And it just, it, and you just feel like, man, can I, can't I catch a break? So I feel bad for her in that sense. And I think that's probably why it is that her mental capacities mm -hmm. fail a little bit. And yeah. that's why she ends up doing all of these things that are just make no sense. And she yeah. does not see clearly. I yeah. think that's what it is. Yeah. Although I would say, I would even bring that back to, uh, you know, what is creator or how do you maintain creativity and a sense of originality is is even though I think we all now and then even if you're someone that truly just does their creative outlet their art purely for the enjoyment of the process of it and not caring about getting recognition or oh I should you know I should catch a break by now they don't care about any outside recognition yeah. or or you know esteem they don't care about any of that even though now and then everyone enjoys that but Th that I think is crucial to have because then that's also what helps you develop your own sense because I think eventually you also stop stop um, looking at other influences so much because then you just start getting into your own groove and then you just enjoy that your own groove so much that it, it, it evolves on its own thing without being influenced as much you know and then you're also not worrying about you know will this so then you can focus purely on that which keeps you motivated and keeps you inspired and then that's how it evolves. I think. I think. If you're living life with the view to get validated by other people, if you are someone who is in that space of not being okay with yourself, not having that validation within yourself and not eating other people to do that for you, I think if you are that, then you can be creative and write and all of these things without being knocked down by external influences. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. But, and and I think, for example, as much as she's here kind of seemingly flogging a dead horse with the poetry classes, she keeps doing this. And then she keeps getting um, negative feedback from her peers. Mm -hmm. And that then turns this love that she, basically her relationship with poetry becomes mm -hmm. very unhealthy and, yeah. and toxic for her and the people around her. Yeah. And, but then this is the thing that she loves, right? And so for me, if she was more confident within herself, these things wouldn't knock her down. Do you know what I mean? Mm. And also no one knows what's going on in your head and your mm. heart. Mm -hmm. And with something that's really creative, I think it's just difficult to get direction from someone yeah. because their direction as well stems from so many things, their personality, yeah. their character, their yeah. how they were socialized, whatever. You yeah. know what I mean? It's a tricky thing with creative stuff to take someone's advice um, but then also listen to what you're trying to do. Yeah. yeah. Stuff thing. And it's kind of, create art creating is kind of uh, a different version of 
do you compare yourself to other people or do you compare yourself to how you used to be? Because yeah. then that way that keeps you motivated. You're like, well, I know I've improved from how I used to be in this way, mm-hmm. you know, because you'll never, there's, you'll never really uh, feel good about yourself. If you're always looking outward. Yeah. You know, there's always going to be someone who's thicker than you or wider than you or larger than you. Yeah. If you know <laughs> You know I mean? Metaphorically. Yes, yeah. <laughs> yeah. One of the things that stood out, of course, in the movie is her relationship with her kids. You know, her being reg- this regret that she has for her unfulfilled dreams, it then affects how she, how she parents her children and the kind of relationship she has with her kids. There are those parents who want to live vicariously through her kids. I think. Um, she first, she, she, we, in the movie, we see her living vicariously through this child, but it seems based on the relationships and the conversations that I had with the family that she initially was trying to do that with her kids. A lot of parents do do that, right? Like they see their kids as an extension of themselves and they have this idea that if you're, if you, if there were hope, if you had hopes and dreams that you didn't fulfill, you can have a kid and then you can channel your kid towards your own hopes and dreams and then when the kid accomplished the, accomplishes those hopes and dreams that you never did, then finally you can breathe that sigh of relief for finally having yeah. accomplished th- this thing. It manifested in a very bad relationship mm-hmm. with the, with the, with her kids, yeah. right? Yeah, leads her to steal a child. As much we, we, as we talked about how not you shouldn't want external sources of validation, mm-hmm. but it is very different when it comes to your parents. You want your parents to not to be proud of you yeah. because these are people you love. Like mm-hmm. even if you have a horrible relationship with your parents and you fought and you feel like you're and you're so angry at them and you move countries, they are with you. Your family, your mm-hmm. blood is with you no matter what. Even that anger, that anger is a sign that you love them, no matter how much you try and, you know, fool yourself into thinking that, no, I'm over this family. And so your life and your happiness primarily depends on um, how good a relationship, the kind of relationship you have with your family, Mm -hmm. with your parents and, you know, how your, how your family uh, works also then will translate into how you interact with the world, right? Mm. They, they influence you in so many ways. So having a parent that tells you, I'm so proud of you, that really sees you and appreciates you for who you are and talks to you and says to you, I see this thing about you, even though it's completely different, um, from who I am and, Mm -hmm. um, you know, what, like what I would like, I really love this thing about you. And I'm so curious about it. I want to learn about it. And I'm so proud of you for, for finding things that you love Mm -hmm. and following um, your dreams, you know? And so that's the kind of relationship you'd ideally want with your parent. And she doesn't give that to her kids because she's so obsessed with her own ambitions and she's wanting her kids to fulfill her own dreams. And she talks about how the kid, the kids are not cultured. They're not into poetry you know, and intellectualism. They're all about Instagram and commercialism. And how did this happen, this generation? And I'm like, how do you, these are your kids. Yeah. How did it happen, yeah. parent? Yeah, you exactly. are the parent. Your kids yeah. are the way that they are yeah. because of you. Yeah. yeah, you can't blame it all on the school or society. You know, yeah. you have the biggest impact, especially early on. Exactly. But maybe people kind of like, that takes away some of the, like the, the, the uh, responsibility. Yeah. They'd be like, ah, well, it's the world's fault. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's nothing to do with me. Every, what everyone wants at the end of the day is to be appreciated, seen for who they are by their parents primarily, but also by everybody yeah. or as many people as possible. And uh, and that's where so much of the, the fights, I think, come of the dysfunction and, and over identity and who you are and, and trying to find something that, that feels like a true self. That's ever everyone's going through that. So really be a parent and just have kids and... I know it's it's maybe easier said than done, but uh, that that that's that's like so much of the struggle in the human condition is just not being seen for who you want to be seen as. Yeah. Just let people have a human experience. Yeah. Let them be. Yeah. <laughs> you just be. Yeah. It's it's interesting to me because we've had this conversation a lot about parents and how they don't when you're when they have children they they don't see you as an individual and they don't raise you as an individual which i think that's what parents ought to do when you're have when you have a kid i don't think it's fair to have a kid just because you're like you know because this is someone you want to mold in a certain direction mm-hmm. i think being a parent is 
looking at your kid and seeing what are the what traits does this person have what mm -hmm. kinds of things are they interested in if they are like you okay great it makes mm -hmm. it easier you know you can channel them towards a you know towards a certain career or any or, or something it's easier for you because you're similar right yeah. because at the end of the day as a parent you're supposed to be guiding your kids through life right mm -hmm. you're the person who helps them socialize into their society mm -hmm. and so that's your role as a parent but if you do it in a way where you are um rest in a restrictive way you know where you say i want you to become a whatever mm -hmm. you know and you're doing that just because that's something that you wanted to do and so well if i didn't do it you have to do it mm -hmm. so i can finally be happy yeah and that then, then well, you're, you start ignoring who your kids yeah. are yeah. and then it, it kind of feels like contingent love i only care you only love me yeah. if i if i act this way and if or if i'm this kind of person yeah. and, and and on the on the on the flip side it's either the money to live vicariously through the person, through your kid, or uh, there seems to be a lot of people that struggle with, yeah, I guess like thinking not even more abstractly, but just be more open-minded where they can only get along with people that like this sports team that have this kind of job that live in this area. So that really limits what your kid can then do. So then, you know, understandably, they kind of want to hold on because they're like, well, I'm, I, I love my kid because growing up, you, you create this bond. But then what if they start to become someone that goes in a totally different career chant? Then I'm, I'm not going to be able to get along with them. Yeah. That's fine. Again, you can still find common stuff to get along with them. Like, doesn't it suck when you, your body starts to age and you notice you, you start to creak and crack and you struggle? Everyone can relate to that. Or like, find just universal things that everyone can relate to if they do end up being, you know, an architect versus working in finance. Yeah. It's like you can still find... You know, yeah. but some people they have like unless you are the exact same, I can't get along with anyone else who's not who's exactly slightly deviated from me. Yeah, yeah, and which is the other interesting thing, right? Because um, I think that's that is why she does that because she, and a lot of parents I think do that too, where they're trying to have their kids be interested in the same kinds of things um, that they were because then there's that similarity you create your own kind of friend and in the family like on the dinner at the dinner table then you're having a conversation around things that you as a parent understand instead of like of things that you know that you don't understand again that is really problematic if you're the kind of person um who's who needs to be into the same kinds of things who needs to you know watch the same kinds of movies or uh i don't know like the same kinds of fun activities or extracurricular activities. If you're that kind of person who only makes friends with people who watch exactly the same things, mm -hmm. you know, that's, I don't know, that's such a limiting thing, mm -hmm. you know? I also don't think that material things um, should be the premise no. of a relationship mm -hmm. because we could be watching the same movie. We yeah. could love hiking, both yeah. you and I, and we really truly love hiking. But what what's happening, like, um, at the hike, the conversation, the conversation is not really mm. filling me up yeah. here. And um, after I just feel very dry or even drained yeah. um, after having, after going for the hike with you, mm. which never mind the hike, you know, at that point, it doesn't really matter. Well, I was say, that's why I think everyone should talk about their mortality more with people, because that's something we can all relate to. It's a, it's a looming thing. Uh, and instead of exactly, because as much as we were saying, you shouldn't need to have all the same material interests to get along with someone. And then I'm thinking to myself, I'm like, to be fair, if there's someone that I can't really connect with on just a base human level, and all we can do is talk about, oh, did you watch, did you like that show? Would you watch that? And if you don't have those same interests, it does make it hard to be around that person. No, but that's not so, what I'm saying. Yeah. I'm not saying like, we're not supposed to hang out. Yeah. That's a, the, that's exactly yeah. the point. Right. Even if the per, um, someone enjoys stuff like that yeah. I like, I know people who enjoy the, the material things that mm -hmm. I like, mm -hmm. you know, the outdoors, mm -hmm. right? I know people who love that. And, but it, but it, despite the fact that these people enjoy those things, we do not, they're not people that I really, you know, mm -hmm. like we don't connect in ways that matter. Yeah. I don't feel. Well, that's what, that's what I'm saying is if you can't connect with people on the, on the, on the real the heart on the soul nothing else matters yeah to me that, that, then you do need to find people then it is important that you like the same material things why because then you can at least be like oh wasn't that great yeah that was great that was a cool for what for a relationship a lasting well, it's not gonna relationship? be it's not gonna be great if, if we're but i'm just about, saying you can at least we're talking kind of about, be if we're around. talking about small talk yeah sure yeah 
But even then, yeah, I feel like. But that's the thing is, I think why some people look like you gotta like the same sports team, you gotta have all these things because they're unable to connect on <laughs> more uh, meaningful levels. Then that's why they're so desperate to like. Oh, I hope you like the same sport as I do. I hope you like the same music as I do because that's all I got. Yeah, you know I mean? but I yeah exactly. But that's, that's the why thing. I think people should talk about death more. Well, I don't know what people should talk about more. <laughs> I, I don't necessarily want to. We don't talk about death at all. No. So, I mean, we, we do for whatever yeah. reasons uh, every now and then. Mm-hmm. But it's... um, I, I don't... I think I the first never... thing you should do when you're meeting a new person is you're like, how are you going to feel right before you die? Are no. you going to feel good about yourself? No. No? But just being vulnerable is the most mm-hmm. important. I think that that is the foundation of a good relationship, being yeah. vulnerable. Mm-hmm. Maggie Gyllenhaal's character mm-hmm. um, so vehemently tries to mold her kids in a certain way, attest to her inability mm-hmm. um, to um, connect mm-hmm. in that way, her mm-hmm. inability to connect with people outside of material things. Mm-hmm. And I think that's then that then manifests as a parent, then you mm-hmm. become that kind of parent who who only sees your kids mattering if they do perform a certain way Mm -hmm. and unfortunately you know like that creates a very a distant relationship Mm -hmm. you know because Mm -hmm. then your your parent is never even the things that you accomplish your parent is never recognizing as accomplishments because Mm -hmm. there aren't stuff that she wants you to accomplish at the end of the day so you're never feeling you know like someone is proud of you you're never and the person that matters the most is proud of you Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'd say that's pretty much. Yeah. I don't know. Oh, did we? Oh, I, 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 plenty. I don't know. Did we talk about like the relationship between the her and the kid? Ah. <laughs> it was unhealthy. Good movie. I liked it. Me too. I absolutely love it. Yeah. I I love the movie. It there was a lot there to yeah. talk about. Yeah. Um, I don't know. I just remember one time when she talks about the kid. She's like, don't let your nanny call you puppy bear. She's, oh, yeah. She's infantilizing like a, yeah. like a baby. You yeah. know, she's infantilizing you. And I'm like, in well, she didn't say infantilizing. She just said, treating she's you being, like treating you like a baby. Yeah. And I'm like, he is five. Yeah, yeah. First of all, it's five. Also, you're in some ways treating him like a kid by taking away his agency. Yeah. Like, I know what's best for you, even though yeah. I'm just your teacher. Yeah. So, but... But that's how people do it is, you know, you can, you can, you can twist things so much to being like, no, I'm seeing you as an adult and I'm treating you maturely. Yeah. Like, no, you're kind of treating them the same, just in a, it, you're being selfish for your needs and they're kind of being so, the, the, the character, you know, the, uh, the babysitter's selfish needs are, it's money. So I'm just going to like, oh yeah, it'll make you happy. You want some ice cream or uh, we'll play games, you know, that kind of thing. Or I'll call you, call you a doggy puppy dog, yeah. you know, because for her mind, she's like, it's just a gig, you know, I just watch over the kid. It's pleasant enough. Yeah. You know? And it's also so so interesting, you know, because she all goes to the parent and, and says, you know, you have a protege here. I I think we should cultivate this. And the parent is like, no, I just want my kid to be a kid, mm-hmm. which is also very extremely mm-hmm. fair. Mm-hmm. Um, although, obviously, he's quite a neglectful parent, yeah. so I'm not even saying that so he's great it's either. It's kind of justifying, like, I want to continue being neglectful. Yeah, it's exactly. Kind of so you're just like, but... yeah, because I'm thinking, okay, he's a kid. Yeah, be him, let him be a kid. But also, if he is... A protege, find a way to find that balance where he can be a kid, but also nurture this yeah. um, this skill that he has, mm-hmm. this gift that he has. It is so problematic mm-hmm. to have and to 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 think that you know better mm-hmm. what how someone else should live. Mm-hmm. You know, mm-hmm. it is the worst thing because you know, like you don't, mm-hmm. you don't even know how, how you, you should, should live, no. right? Because think about yourself every single day. I mean, if you're someone who's really healthily living life even if there are problems in your Mm -hmm. life you are always constantly reassessing and looking at yourself and trying to figure out what am i doing wrong here Mm -hmm. you know how did i interact with that person was i right when i said that Mm -hmm. you know i think that i might have maybe overstepped or let me call and let me you know kind of make make amends or myself right okay i tried this this didn't work what does that mean am i really capable here yeah. you're reflecting reflecting all the time mm. and so even for yourself you're never really certain you can never really you know say that this is a hard fast true or the truth or fact mm-hmm. i am this way or what i do is right or this way that i'm living is the right way you know especially mm-hmm. looking back at yourself 10 years ago look at yourself now so much of a difference so what kind of audacity should, you know must you have 
to tell a parent that someone else that they should parent their kid a certain way yeah. and also how do you how can you really truly say that you know for a fact that this is something that's good for someone yeah well anyway yeah. that's about it that's, that's it all I have that's the kindergarten that. teacher yeah kindergarten kindergarten yeah <laughs> yeah a garden for kinders yeah, yeah that's a cute name that's uh, what do you guys think of the, the kindergarten teacher yeah. I, I give it honestly like Maybe I'd give it a nine simply because the end was a little contrived with her getting locked up. Uh, but everything else, I gotta say, still nine, nine out of ten is still good. I'd, say I'd give it a nine. If that's the only thing, seriously, I'm giving it a ten okay, out of well, ten, truly. Well, just because, like, it wasn't flawless to me, I guess. That okay, that's sense. fair. Yeah. yeah. For but, me, a ten out of ten, like the last few movies that have ten ten, I'm like, I really can't pin down anything in particular that I would have changed, you know? Yeah, but like, I I, yeah. I feel like it was, yeah. I don't know, I think that it ended the way that it, it, it oh, should it have should, ended. It, it, how, I like how, how it ended. How else could it have? No, well, that's well, that's why I understand why. It's just... It, You're just it, upset it that because because the, the, the lock was outside. Really make sense. There was a lock outside. Yeah. yeah, yeah, it doesn't make sense how she got yeah, locked. Yeah, but, right but it could happen. If it had, yeah. if it, if there's a key, Yeah. you know, you could have the um that key that's out, that's maybe the key is outside of the door. And, Obviously, maybe the person who was there before had left yeah. it out there. Maybe in who some knows? hotels, they know. have doors that can be locked from the... <laughs> Doesn't really make sense. I'm going to say that's, it's that's okay. literally I'm... the only reason you're giving it a 9 out of 10. Yeah. <laughs> okay. I'm allowed to rate it however I want to rate that it. That is you can fair. Give it a 10, I'm, I'm giving it a 10. You, you've rated other movies lower than I have in the past. So that's true. Okay, so I'm a little so more yeah. fresh. Okay, yeah. so then 9.5. Yeah. Yeah. Out of 10. Average. Yeah, it's good. That's, that's fine. That's, that's fine. Nothing wrong with that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, anyway, what do you guys think? Yeah. Let us know. Yeah. And next time, till next time, until next time, bye. Bye. <laughs>